Today, we are going to be talking about killer perks. If they're not worthwhile, I'm not going to click on them and put them here. Okay. Anyway, let's begin with Nurse's Calling. So, this perk lets you see the auras of survivors who are healing or being healed. It's a nice perk. I do like this, but it works better on some killers than others. So, for example, killers who can become stealthy will find this perk more valuable than killers who cannot. Because oftentimes, when you are a killer and you run this perk and you have a full 32 meter tear radius, what's going to happen is you will have survivors who are healing and once they hear your heartbeat, they will stop healing because they are afraid you might have this perk. Another issue is that you may be in the reveal radius for Nurse's Calling to activate, but you have to be looking for that survivor. You have to be looking at them. If they're not in your field of view, you will not see them healing. Simple as that. It could be a good perk on a decent amount of killers, but I would say keep it limited to, to stealth killers, okay? That is my opinion on Nurse's Calling. Agitation increases your move speed while transporting survivors. Carrying survivors, there are times where if you had that extra move speed, you could have made it to the hook. But it's it's a really niche perk, in my opinion. It doesn't synergize with too many things. It synergizes with, like, Awakened Awareness and Starstruck. But this is something you take on, on like, Leatherface, who wants to, to basement camp or something. There's just so many other perks that compete for a slot here that Agitation is one of the last ones I would consider. Awakened Awareness. Now, this one lets you see survivor auras when you are carrying a survivor. Any survivors within 20 meters of you. Even if you know that some survivors are nearby when you're carrying somebody, it doesn't translate to any real value because if you're carrying someone, you can't move at your full speed, you can't use your power. So you just see them and you can just like wave at them like, hey, you know, I'm carrying somebody to the hook, but you can't do anything about it really. Like I said earlier, you can couple this with Iron Grasp or Agitation or Starstruck. You can get a little bit of extra value from it, but it's still a very short period of time. You carry a survivor for 15 seconds, okay? You're probably just going to book it to the hook. So I would not recommend it. Bamboozle. Now this perk I do approve of because it helps a lot during your chases, especially for killers who do not have a power that helps them in chases, such as Wraith, you know? Wraith and Trapper. I mean, Trapper, if he's set up, he can end a chase faster, but sometimes he hasn't set up in an area and he needs a little help. It synergizes well with a lot of killers like Myers, Legion, who can vault uh, the windows, Superior Anatomy, you combine it with this and you get really fast window vault speed. And it works with the Clown as well. Block the window and then the survivor has no choice but to run for the pallet and you can gas them so they can't reach the pallet in time. So yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of killers who, who work really well with this. So if you have trouble with survivors looping you, Bamboozle is a great pick. Barbecue and Chili. This one, I feel, is reserved for high mobility killers, okay? People like Blight and Hillbilly, Nurse, Wraith too, since he's pretty fast. Because, you know, even though you, you reveal the survivor auras after you hook somebody, to get value out of this, you have to be able to reach that survivor before their aura disappears. Or somebody like Demogorgon as well. He can use his portals. Uh, Freddy can make use of this. Sadako. Hopefully you catch my drift. So it can be a good pick. Equip it with the right killer and you will get a decent amount of value from this. Beast of Prey. I probably would not recommend this. If you're going into Bloodlust, probably taking too long. 
I would say pick a perk that helps you end the chases faster. Don't rely on Bloodlust. Bitter Murmur. Now, this can couple well with certain perks, like Rancor here. If you see all Survivor Auras, you can find your obsession, and you can insta-kill them. But um, the issue is, it's not always useful, because even if a gen goes off, you're very likely going to be busy doing something else. When that gen goes off, you're going to be chasing somebody, you're going to be across the map, you're going to be hooking somebody. There are some scenarios where you are heading to the gen that's about to be completed, and then the aura reveal really helps you at the beginning stages of your chase, but it's just kind of luck-based in my opinion, okay? Whether this helps you or not. Except for the final reveal. That's, that's almost always useful, but... Blood Echo. Now, this is a pretty good perk for certain killers, and I would say it's a good perk for killers like Plague. Survivors who don't cleanse, they'll both be exhausted and they'll have hemorrhage. And, you know, hemorrhage doesn't really matter that much because survivors can't heal anyway because they're broken, but exhaustion is pretty bad because everybody runs exhaustion perks, right? And if you want, you can bring Blood Echo and Bloodhound and then you can have super tracking ability because everybody's going to be bleeding out unless they cleanse. And also for Legion as well, since he tends to keep survivors injured the whole game. Perhaps for Wraith, he does a pretty good job at applying pressure. Uh, Hag as well, she can keep a team injured for a while. Even perhaps um, Oni. Oni with his blood orbs, he can discourage survivors from, from healing up fully because if he interrupts a heal, they will continue to bleed out and lose their healing progress. Thus, more blood orbs will be created for him to soak up. Of course, it is countered by healing up before somebody gets hooked. I would say it might be worth taking, just um, just make sure you pick the right killer. Blood Warden. I'm sure many people have experienced what it's like to play against this perk. The killer hooks somebody when the gates are open and you can't leave for a minute. Pretty scary. I think it's a pretty threatening perk. The only issue is that survivors tend to 99 the gates and wait for you to hook somebody before opening the gates. And if they do that, this perk doesn't activate, which does make it sometimes useless, okay? That being said, it can certainly be the reason you win your matches. Combine it with this, and you can oftentimes secure some kills. Combine it with this, and you have a very scary endgame. Overall, I do think Blood Warden is worth taking, um, but I do think... It is better on some killers than others. You want a killer who is powerful at the end game. And that's usually like Myers, who can charge up his tier 3. Plague tends to have a lot of corrupt fountains at the end because everybody tends to cleanse at the end of the game. And Pig, yeah, Pig for sure, with her head traps. Nemesis as well. will be tier 3 with his power. But yeah, I do like Blood Warden. Just uh, make sure you pick the right killer for it. Bloodhound. I don't think this is that useful because even if the blood pools last longer and are more visible, you can still just track the survivors from grunts of pain or through their scratch marks. I don't think it's that bad, but there's so many other perks that you'd want to bring. Bloodhound is probably one that you can't really afford to, to slot in. Brutal Strength. You look at the numbers, Brutal Strength decreases your pallet breaking speed by about half a second, which actually is often the difference between a survivor getting a vault off, you missing your swing, or being able to, to hit them right before they complete it. I think this gives you a little bit of a boost at the moment you need it, which is during the chase. A lot of killers nowadays, they don't really need this because they have powers that can end the chases faster for them. They don't always need to break the pallet. They can use their power to play around the pallet. It's more for killers like Trapper, Wraith, maybe Hillbilly or um, Myers, you know. If you do find chases taking too long, then Brutal Strength can help you end them a bit faster. 
Call up Ryan. They recently nerfed this pretty hard. Used to be Metaperk. Is it worth taking? I mean, I probably wouldn't take it. The the difference is just so so minimal. It can serve as a somewhat decent detection tool because you do get that noise notification when a survivor hits a skill check, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it anymore. Claustrophobia. Now, the issue with this, it's kind of a similar problem that Bitter Murmur has, which is you'll oftentimes be busy doing something else. When um, the gen goes off, you'll be across the map, you'll be hooking somebody, or even if you're not doing something, the survivors who complete the gen will just run out of that area. And then all the windows that are blocked, they don't really matter because they're already on a bunch of different tiles. Corrupt Intervention. Now, I do like this perk. I like it because it gives you time at the beginning of the match. Now, this is an important perk for certain killers. This perk is great for killers who need time to set up. Trapper, Hag, Demogorgon, also Plague is a really good user of this because she blocks three gens and then she can vomit on all the rest of them and basically force survivors to either waste two minutes or force them to become infected. Pretty good for Legion as well. It increases the chances that more than one survivor will work on the same gen, so Legion can get more chain hits off. A Doctor could work well with him because it forces survivors to group up on the same gen, so he can get more value out of his Static Blast. You know, there's, there's quite a few killers who can make use of this. Chorophobia. It's one of those perks that are kind of hard to, to see if they're doing anything for you. Uh, is it good with anybody? I mean, I think the, the best user of this perk is probably like Doctor, who can blow up his radius. I don't know. I just don't see that much use for it. I think mostly Doctor is the one you'd want this on. So I would not uh, recommend this. Coup de Gras. Each time a gen is completed, you get a token, which increases the distance of your next lunge by almost twice as much. The killer who benefits most from this is probably Myers when he's in tier 3. Maybe Ghostface as well. I mean, there is Oni, but he has to be in demon mode. I think the killers who can expose people, those are the ones you would probably want this on. Dark Devotion. Now, this is a powerful effect. The only issue is that you have to find your obsession. It confuses the survivor team quite a bit because it sounds like their teammate is the killer and you can go around being stealthy. So, um, like I said before, the only issue with this is that you have to find your obsession, which kind of makes this a luck-based perk to me. And I really don't like luck-based perks. I also don't like obsession perks because it relies on luck for you to run into your obsession. If you want to deal with the obsession mechanic, you can run this. I, I almost never use this because it's, it's just too luck-based, okay? Darkness Revealed. Now, this is probably one of the most picked killer perks because it's just it's just so easy to get value out of it. You check a locker and then you see survivors. It's that simple. And it works very well with the killers you would expect. Huntress and Trickster. These two basically always have darkness revealed on them. And of course Dredge, because he is the the locker based killer, right? Any any killer who has a problem finding survivors, I think Nurse could benefit from this pretty pretty strongly. Uh, Dead Man's Switch. I know a lot of people use this. It's a pretty good perk in my opinion. It can buy you quite a bit of time. The only issue is that once survivors are aware that you're running this perk, they will just not let go of the gen. They will just keep working on it after you hook somebody, and it won't do anything for you. However, you can get around this by using certain perks such as Pain Resonance. This is probably like the most common combo perk ever. When you hook somebody on a Scourge Hook, it will cause the survivor repairing a gen to scream. They will let go of the gen. The gen will lose progress and will be blocked for the period of time. It's quite good with this. You can also combo it 
if you have the proper killer, Doctor. Very strong with Doctor's Static Blast. I do approve of this perk. Make sure to combine it with Pain Resonance or another perk that can make survivors scream or that can force them off the gen to get the most value out of this perk. Deadlock. This is a very popular gen stalling perk. I do approve of it because it's a very simple effect. Anytime a gen is completed, the gen with the most progress after that one gets blocked automatically. You don't have to sacrifice any time from your chase. You don't have to kick a gen. It just works. And that is my favorite type of perk. The perk that just does its job. Deathbound. I really don't like this perk. Just because there are so many conditions, okay? And you don't even know if it's really doing anything for you. This one, it's hard to justify bringing this. There are some situations where you'll have multiple survivors slugged, you know. You're trying to pressure the survivor team, right? Those scenarios, they're not always going to happen. And also, you're not always going to need to know where those uh, survivors are. Because they tend to stay in the same place and recover, hoping that their team will come pick them up. It's not that important. Discordance. It helps you prioritize which gens to, to focus on. You know, let's say you have one gen where it's kind of like 50%. You might want to focus on that, but then you see Discordance go off and you're like, uh-oh, there's two survivors trying to rush a gen. I need to go disrupt them, you know? It's, it's more important to disrupt multiple survivors than to just camp a gen with no survivors on it, even if it has some progress on it, okay? Discordance lets you disrupt the largest number of survivors at one time by giving you this information. It works well with killers who can threaten multiple survivors at a single time. Plague can infect multiple people at the same time, so she's pretty threatening with Discordance. Uh, Legion, obviously, that's his main perk. And Knight, you can summon a guard, and you can chase one survivor while the guard chases the other. Artist, of course, you can just send some birds. A Doctor, as well, makes great use out of uh, that perk with his Static Blast. So yeah. That's a bunch of killers who would enjoy Discordance. Dissolution, okay. It is kind of uh, tricky to get it to work for you, but basically, if a survivor throws down a pallet during a chase, after you've injured them, if they vault that pallet, the pallet breaks by itself. And this can be a great perk on killers who struggle with chases, because there are a couple different mechanics that survivors use during chases to lose you or to make distance. One of those mechanics is vaulting a drop pallet. This perk lets you take that tool away from the survivors, okay? I find Clown with his bottles, he can make some great use out of this. See, a uh, Spirit as well. The survivors tend to drop pallets and, and mind game the, the pallets. Yeah, you know, Doctor as well. You can force survivors to vault pallets with his power. And once they vault a pallet, if this perk is active, then the pallet goes away and you catch up to them really fast. So yeah, lots of options for you. Distressing, uh, this is honestly just a, a drawback most of the time. Survivors will be able to hear you coming from a larger distance away. Um, it can synergize with certain killers like Doctor or certain perks like uh, Distressing or something, but those are very niche use cases for this perk, so I probably would not uh, recommend it. Dragon's Grip, it's okay. It just, it's kind of hard to get value out of this because you'll kick a gen and then you don't know when they're going to touch it or even if they're going to touch it because if you kick the gen, there might be a survivor in the area and they might touch the gen, but who knows how far you're going to be when they go back to the gen, how far away you're going to be. You might have went off to patrol somewhere else and if there's no survivor around, let's, let's just say they heard you coming they booked it to a different gen and they never came back to that gen. You just activated Dragon's Grip on a gen nobody came back to. I think this works best on gens that are highly contested. Stuff like the middle gen, it can discourage survivors from wanting to work on it. I suppose it's worth taking. Just uh, don't be sad if you're disappointed. Dying Light, this is an awful perk just because um, by the time you get a significant amount of penalty to all of the action speeds, the game is probably near over. 
Enduring, a pretty good perk. I wouldn't recommend it on every killer because not every killer really plays around the pallets too much. Uh, Enduring is kind of useless for Nurse. She just teleports through the pallets and stuff. Hag as well. Hag can just set traps and ignore pallets. Uh, same thing with Huntress. She probably don't need Enduring on Huntress. Trickster as well, doesn't really need it. Deathslinger, mm, probably not. And uh, Knight, Knight doesn't need it. Artist probably doesn't need it. There are some killers who do need it, okay? Ghostface can need it. Trapper, Pig, Hillbilly, Wraith. Wraith for sure. <laughs> Man, Wraith needs this pretty bad. Myers could need it. Uh, Legion, of course, also. Just make sure you use this perk on the right killer, and you'll be happy. Eruption, pretty good perk, even after the nerf. It just depends on you making sure that you kick the gens, okay? I think it works best on killers who are mobile and they can afford to kick the gens along the way without wasting too much time. First recommendation probably would be Wraith. He has a very high out of combat movement speed. Freddy, Freddy can make some good use out of it. And it's also a good pick on killers who can end chases fast because the longer a chase goes on, the higher the chance that the gen you kicked will get completed. So Oni, Oni for sure. He has both mobility and one shots, so. And uh, Blight, Blight as well. Knight uh, with his guards. The guard can down a survivor and that will activate eruption. So he could be kicking a gen and his guard could get it down and then the gen regresses. It's pretty good. I would recommend eruption. Okay, Fearmonger. I use this perk all the time. And the reason is that every survivor brings exhaustion perks, okay? Pretty much every single one. If you look at the data, the top survivor builds almost always have an exhaustion perk in them. You're almost always going to get value out of Fearmonger. And blindness, while it's not that powerful, it does leave survivors on the edge a little bit. Let's say you down somebody, right? They don't know exactly where you are after you down somebody. They don't know where their ally is. They can't see their allies with bonds or kindred or anything. Windows of opportunity. I mean, there's there's a lot of perks that survivors run that Fearmonger will block for them. It's especially useful on killers who have a rough time during chases because if you don't have Fearmonger, what happens is the survivors working on gens have their exhaustion perks ready for the chase and it's going to take you an extra 15, 20 seconds to catch each of them. Me personally, I run sprint burst all the time. And if a killer doesn't have a fear monger, I just sprint burst to the nearest tile and there is no chance they can catch me. And I'm basically ready to loop at that point because I got uh, my exhaustion perk off. I would definitely recommend this. Fire up. It's a similar problem that Dying Light has. It takes too long for the benefits to kick in. It's like, who cares if you have 20% faster vaulting speed, breaking speed, whatever, if the game's already over? It doesn't matter. Forced Penance. Protection hits are kind of a rare occurrence. And even if somebody takes one, all it does is prevent them from healing for a little while. So I wouldn't recommend it. Franklin's Demise. It's a pretty good perk. You just have to make sure that the survivors in the lobby, they have items for this to, to be worthwhile the number one time I, I tend to bring it is like it's a lobby full of flashlight users okay i don't like flashlights and i will bring franklin's demise just to spite survivors who bring them and this also pairs well with um hoarder here you can force survivors to drop their items and then when they go back to pick them up you will see where they are anyway furtive chase i don't really like it it doesn't really make much of an impact. Like even if your terror radius is decreased while in a chase, they know they're in a chase, so it doesn't really help you. The only way you're really gonna get benefit is if you abandon your chase while your terror radius is small, and then you sneak up on somebody else. And I mean, that can happen sometimes, but it's it's such a narrow use case, it's, it's not really worth it. And you have to build up the tokens as well. It's gonna take some time for this to actually give you something. So yeah, I don't like it. Game of foot. When are you going to damage a gen during a chase? I mean, it's, it's a really rare thing. I, I wouldn't do that. Breaking walls and pallets is a bit better, but the thing is that this only works while chasing the obsession. That also is a big drawback because, like I said, 
finding the obsession is luck-based. I hate luck-based perks, okay? I hate luck-based anything. Uh, gearhead. I do like Gearhead. Gearhead is a perk I use all the time. This has gotten me a lot of kills, okay? Like, let's say, you know, Gearhead activates, right? And then you hit somebody, and then you see a survivor working on a gen. You go to that survivor who's working on the gen, and then you see their aura. That survivor, they hear your terror radius, and they're hiding. They're hiding, thinking that you can't see their aura. They're like, you know, how could he possibly see my aura? I'm not really doing anything. I'm just preparing a gen, right? And you can see them. So you just get a free hit. Very useful. Especially useful on killers who have a hard time finding survivors. Like Nurse, like Huntress. You can get some, some wicked Huntress snipes with Gearhead, okay? Ghostface for stalking people. Myers for stalking people. You can do Freddy to teleport to the proper gen. So yeah, I mean, there's just so many killers who, who love Gearhead. Grim Embrace. Now this is a nice perk. I don't personally use it myself. The reason I don't use it myself, it requires you to hook every survivor at least once. And you don't really know how the game's gonna go. Uh, you don't know if you're gonna tunnel somebody out early. You don't know if you're only gonna focus two survivors or if you're gonna find all of them. I think the reason I don't like this perk is because similar to Game of Foot or other obsession perks, it's kind of luck based whether you run into every single survivor. That's probably why I don't use it. That being said, it is a strong perk. I mean, it basically buys you 40 seconds of time. If you want to play as like a fair killer who, who hooks everybody at least once, Grim Embrace can be good, but me personally, I, I don't use it. Hangman's Trick, if for some reason survivors have been sabotaging your hooks all night, then you can bring this perk, but otherwise it's it's really useless, okay? That's kind of the only reason you would bring it, to counter sabotage. Hex Blood Favor, it's a very strong perk. It reminds me of Claustrophobia, except it's actually useful. It blocks all pallets from being dropped in a 32 meter radius after injuring somebody. And there's no cooldown, it just, it just works anytime you injure somebody. Very scary. To, uh, to deal with as a survivor. Um, the only issue, of course, is that it is a hex. Hexes tend to get cleansed. It might stay up the entire match, your totem. Another match, it gets cleansed in a minute. So that's why I don't like hex perks because it's kind of up to, uh, to luck. That's why I don't like hexes. Same thing with crowd control. Powerful perk, blocks windows anytime somebody falls through it, but just be prepared for your totem to blow up okay devour hope same thing you can insta kill people if you get enough tokens but uh, like i said totem can go boom whenever face of darkness it's kind of just like a generic detection perk honestly you could pair it with lethal pursuer because two seconds of aura reveal is kind of short but i think with lethal pursuer it'd basically be like barbecue except it would happen every 25 seconds, which would probably be a pretty decent combination, honestly. So yeah, I'd say if you want to use this, pair it with Lethal Pursuer. So the aura duration is actually meaningful. Haunted Ground, I do like this one because even if the totem gets cleansed, it does something. It exposes everybody. This will often, almost always guarantee that you get at least one down. Hunch Lullaby, I don't really like this one because it just takes too long for the the benefit to show up. It's like by the time you're um, you get enough stacks, it's probably already cleansed. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably already blown up. Somebody's found it and blown it up, it, and it doesn't really do enough to to warrant bringing it. Okay, No One Escapes Death. Obviously, this is a very strong end game perk. The only issue is that. Uh, you know, survivors can find the totem relatively quickly because the aura of the totem gets revealed over a period of 30 seconds. You just have to really get use out of it the moment the end game starts. Okay. Pentimento, very nice perk, very nice hex. Even if your totems get cleansed, you can revive them and get a strong 30% repair speed reduction 
even for just having one rekindled totem. You can combo it with Hex Plaything. It's like these two are just, these two are made for each other, okay? Plaything forces survivors to cleanse totems, because otherwise they will be oblivious the whole game. And Pentimenta will let you rekindle those destroyed totems. And of course, Plaything by itself is also very strong. It makes survivors incapable of hearing your terror radius, which is very powerful on certain killers, such as Myers, you know, who can one-shot people, uh, Hillbilly, uh, Leatherface, right? Basically anybody who can one-shot or anybody who has a very scary chase, like Nurse, you know, people who can end chases fast. Retribution, uh, I never really use this. I'm trying to, to think about why. I mean, Oblivious, now, I know I said Oblivious is strong, it is, but let's say somebody is cleansing the totem, right? Well, it takes 15 seconds to cleanse a totem. So after they're, they're done cleansing your, your dull totem here, they'll only have Oblivious for 30 seconds, which is not really that big of a deal. However, if they cleanse a hex totem, that's a pretty powerful effect, 15 seconds of aura reveal. But you're not always going to need that because you're probably going to be in a chase with somebody and you already know where they are. So it doesn't seem that useful to me, in my opinion. Um, it's not the worst perk, okay? But I just think there are so many other hexes that do more than this that are more worthwhile. Hex Ruin. Do I like this perk? I mean, it used to be a lot better before they nerfed it. I suppose I could recommend it. I suppose. It's not useless, okay? It can give you... It can give you some seconds back, like... Like, let's say somebody gets off their gen to... To save somebody on hook. Or maybe... People just don't do gens and they search for your totem. Even, even just one survivor not doing a gen. That can be the reason you win the game later on, okay? Survivors don't like seeing their progress go to waste. So they will look for your, your Hex Ruin totem, okay? Somebody will look for it. And that will buy you enough time to win the game. Sometimes. Hex Third Seal? The, the reason I don't like this perk is because so many survivors are in... Um, they're in Discord calls, you know? They're in voice chat. They can just tell each other, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm over here. I'm, I'm slugged in the corner of the map. Also, you have to hit people. You have to, hit, for every survivor to get blindness, you have to hit them first. If even one survivor is not blind, let's say you're doing a slugging build, that one survivor who's not blind can revive everybody else. A hex throw of the hunt. If your whole build is dedicated to hex totems, then maybe, maybe this is good. But it's, it's a maximum 50% totem cleansing speed reduction. Now, that would make the totems take quite a bit longer, and you could go back and defend them. Uh, that is basically the point of this perk, to help you defend your totems. But uh, if you're going to run this, I would definitely pick a killer who is suited to defense, like Trapper, like Hag, like uh, Skull Merchant. Knight could do well if you send your, your guard over to the, the totem. Uh, twins, maybe, if you want to camp your, your totem with twins, you can do that. Uh, spirit, you can phase over to your, your totem really quick. It can be okay, just um, pick the right the right killer and the right perks. Hex Undying? Is it good or is it bad? I mean, mm, the only hex that's really worth taking Undying for is Devour Hope, because it's so important to keep your stacks. Undying lets you keep your stacks if it gets cleansed. Pair Undying with Devour Hope. That is my suggestion. Hoarder. Do I like Hoarder? Probably not. Um, I would only really run this with Franklin's Demise. By default, there's only like three chests on every map. This will bump it up to five. But it's also kind of a drawback because you're giving survivors more chests to loot. Like, you don't really want to give them more resources, but this perk kind of needs you to give them more resources to be useful. I don't know. I just don't really like like how it's giving survivors um, more items to play with. This is mostly a detection perk. If you want a detection perk, there are probably better options for you. Okay. 
Ubris. Now, this by itself is not very threatening because you have to get stunned. And if you're stunned, you can't, you know, you can't hit a survivor, obviously. What you can do with this is you can pair Hubris with something like Enduring and Spirit Fury, okay? They stun you with a pallet, pallet gets broken by itself, and you get the one shot pretty easy. That is probably the main combination you would use Hubris with. Uh, hysteria. Let's say you injure a survivor, and the rest of the team is also injured. All injured survivors will not be able to perceive your terror radius for 30 seconds. Now, this is very powerful on certain killers. Plague, obviously, she can... Like, I think her, her biggest drawback is people just holding W when they're injured, and they can loop her pretty easy, um, and they don't heal. But with uh, Hysteria, they're not going to know you're coming. So you're basically a stealth killer with everybody injured. If everybody's injured, it's so easy to just finish them off. If they don't have a pallet or window nearby, they're going down. So yes, I would, would recommend Hysteria. I'm all ears. This can be pretty good for mind games, definitely. If you have an issue with survivors being able to outplay you at loops, or maybe you're just a killer who needs to see auras, like um, Nurse could make very good use out of this. Huntress could make good use out of it. Pyramid Head, very good use out of it with his Rice of Judgment. Artist, she would love this perk. But uh, yeah, lots of killers would love to see auras after somebody vaults a pallet or a window or something. Infectious Fright. I do like this perk. It's a pretty nifty detection perk. It lets you see nearby survivors after you down somebody. It makes them all scream. And given that almost nobody runs Calm Spirit, you will almost always get some value out of this. The issue is that if you choose to hook the survivor you just downed, then the information is kind of worthless, okay? It's like, okay, well, now you know where all the nearby people are, but you're going to hook somebody. Uh, by then, they're already halfway across the map, so it doesn't even matter if they, they screamed. Um, but if you're going for a like a map pressure build, or you just, you're just playing aggressively, you're not hooking people, you're just slugging and stuff, Infectious Fright can let you put pressure on people. I think a prime example of a great Infectious Fright user would be Oni. With his speed and his one-shots, he can be very dangerous with Infectious Fright. Uh, same thing with Myers. With his one-shots, he can just snowball with Infectious Fright. Insidious. Is Insidious good? Probably not. Okay, I think this is just a perk made for, for camping. The only people I see using this are, are Leatherface in the basement. So I probably would not recommend this. Iron Grasp. This just helps you get to hooks a bit easier. I probably would not recommend it. It's, it really isn't useful enough to, to recommend. Okay. Iron Maiden. I do use this perk sometimes. I think the most, the killers who get the most value out of Iron Maiden are Huntress and Trickster because they are the ones checking lockers to reload all the time. And also uh, Leatherface as well, because when you're using your chainsaw, survivors will hop into lockers to try and um, to try and avoid getting hit by your chainsaw. Maybe Doctor as well, if you don't like people hiding from your static blast, um, it can be useful for him. And uh, let's see who else. Um, I don't know. Maybe Dredge? If you combine Dredge and his Darkness Revealed, perhaps, but... Mm, you know, I think artists as well, because sometimes people will will go inside lockers to get rid of your crows. Then when they when they hop out of the locker, they'll be exposed, and you can just slap them. Jolt, I do like Jolt. Jolt is one of my favorite perks because it just works. It's just a perk that regresses gens anytime you down somebody. It's great. It's great. Um, the only issue is that. It only helps killers who use basic attacks. 
to down survivors. It does not activate from killers like Huntress with her hatchets or um, Hillbilly with his chainsaw. So I would say if you're going to use Jolt, you should use it with killers who are primarily basic attack focused. Knockout. This kind of has the same problem as um, has the same problem as Hex Third Seal, where survivors can just communicate with each other if they're in a group. Survivors can also just recover by themselves if they have Unbreakable or there's a boon up or something. If you're going for a slugging build, then maybe, but by itself, I probably would not recommend it. Lethal Pursuer. I do like this perk a lot. This is one of the most used killer perks, and for good reason, because it speeds up your early game a lot. I mean, oftentimes, if you don't have Lethal Pursuer, what will happen is you'll spend like an extra 10, 20 seconds looking for a survivor to kill. It, it could even be longer than that if they're playing stealthy, you know? And every second you're not chasing somebody, they are doing gens. Survivors are at their strongest during the early game. You want to cripple them as fast as you can. That is why Lethal Pursuer is so good. Now, you can combo this with a lot of different perks here. One of the biggest ones is Nowhere to Hide, which will let you see survivors' auras anytime you kick a gen. I believe it also works with Darkness Revealed, which lets you see survivors anytime you check a locker. Oh, and Gearhead as well. Gearhead. Yeah, that too. So there's quite a bit of synergy here. You can also pair it with add-ons. Add-ons that reveal survivor auras, such as this one. Let's just see survivor auras anytime they're within 24 meters of a down pallet. This will increase the duration to 7 instead of 5. So yeah, very versatile detection perk. A leverage. I think with a lot of these token-based perks, it just takes too long to see the benefit. Same thing with Dying Light, same thing with Furtive Chase, uh, same thing with Huntress Lullaby. It just takes too long. And it doesn't, it doesn't really do enough. All it does is reduce healing speed. That's nothing. Lightborn, I mean, if you really don't like flashlights, you can bring this, but I think 90% of the time, you probably can just avoid the flashlight without this perk. Mad Grit, this is honestly just a meme. <laughs> this is a meme perk, okay? It lets you swing really fast when you are um, carrying a survivor. If you hit somebody, the wiggle timer pauses, but it's such a small window of time during your game where you're, you're carrying somebody. It almost doesn't matter. It really almost doesn't matter. Make your choice. I do like this perk. It's mostly used by killers who can travel the map in an instant. So that would be killers like Hillbilly, Nurse, maybe Hag, you know? If somebody sets off a trap, Freddy can use it. There's a lot of killers who have mobility, okay? And Maker Choice can be a good pick for them. Merciless Storm, I don't really like this perk because it relies on the survivor making a mistake, and the more experienced you become, the better the survivors become as well. They'll probably nail every single skill check. That's just the reality. I've never missed a Merciless Storm skill check ever. They're really not that hard to hit. Uh, Monitor and Abuse, I do like this perk. If you're going to use this, you want to use it on a killer who already has a small tear radius. As you can see, Hag's tear radius is 24 meters. With Monitor and Abuse, it would be 16 meters. Very small. That is half the standard 32 meter radius. That will let you get 50% closer to a survivor before they start running. It also increases your field of view, so you have a bit more situational awareness. Nemesis. You could couple it with things like play with your food to make it a bit easier to stack tokens, but it just doesn't seem that useful by itself. Even if you do couple it, it's not that great, okay? No Way Out. This is a great endgame perk. This just buys you time. It buys you more time to secure kills before they escape. If you want to focus on the endgame, this is the perk for you. Nowhere to hide. If you are a killer who has a hard time finding survivors like Nurse or Huntress or something, Nowhere to Hide will do wonders for you. It's also almost broken on killers like Blight because the aura reveal 
follows you. Any survivor within 24 meters of the killer is revealed. So after you kick a gen with Blight, what you do is you go and rush across the map. And you can sweep entire sections of the map with wall hacks, basically. You can do this with Hillbilly as well. You can do it with... You can't do it with Spirit because she doesn't have aura reveal during her phase walk. But the mobile killers love this perk. The oppression. I think the thing that holds this perk back is its long cooldown. If it had a cooldown of maybe 60 seconds, I think people would use it a lot more. Um, it's a pretty strong effect. It basically regresses four generators, the one you kick, and three other random gens. I don't think survivors are going to be able to, to tap all the gens at once. You're going to get some value out of this, okay? It pairs very well, very well with surveillance. Because if multiple gens are aggressing, surveillance will tell you when a survivor touches one of those gens. The cooldown is the only thing holding it back. Overcharge. I do like overcharge even after the nerf, because even experienced survivors will miss these skill checks. They are challenging enough for even veteran players to miss them. If nobody touches the gen, then you get a faster regression speed. So it's nice. It also serves as a detection perk because if somebody messes up the skill check, then you know where they are. Uh, overwhelming Presence. I don't really like this perk. First of all, it relies on your terror radius. So if you're a killer without a terror radius, it doesn't really help you. If a survivor doesn't have an item, it doesn't help you. And if a survivor's already used their item, it doesn't help you. And if a survivor uses their item outside your terror radius, it doesn't help you. Okay, so there's just so many ways that the survivors can play around this. It doesn't seem worth it. Play with your food. This is a nice perk, but it's kind of a, a luck-based perk, okay? You have to find the obsession, and you have to let them escape the chase. And you have to do this multiple times to get your tokens. So, I mean, the use case for this, it can take some time to build up the tokens, but if you're running the proper killer or the proper build, it can be very strong. I'm sure many of you have come into contact with like a tier three, uh, infinite tier three Myers or something, or a tombstone Myers who uses uh, play with your food. Uh, those are very scary very scary players but I think he's probably the main user of play with your food plague might use it because she can farm the tokens and she doesn't have to to waste any because everybody's already gonna be injured from infection so she can keep the speed boost for longer so that is a, a good argument for plague to use it there might be some logic to saying race could use it because um, with his bell he can start chasing the obsession right then he uses his bell and he can immediately end the chase once he goes into stealth. And he can do that three times pretty quickly without wasting too much time. You gotta pick the right killer, you gotta have the right build. That's what I'm gonna say about it. Pop goes the weasel. Uh, this is gonna get buffed in the upcoming patch. So it's gonna be 30% instead of 20%, which will probably make it worth using. Predator, I would not recommend this because it's just... It's not really giving you anything extra. You can already see scratch marks. This just makes them a little bit easier to follow. Rancor, this is kind of a luck-based perk. Unless you have the proper detection perks to find the obsession, you probably aren't going to get value out of Rancor, okay? Remember me? I do like this perk for an endgame build, and it can be quite strong if you pair it with a killer like a killer like Trapper, because what it'll do is the survivor can't open the gate fast enough, and then you can head to each gate and you can trap them. And then suddenly the gates become really hard to open because there's a trap next to them now. It could be good on demo because he can set up his, his portals. Maybe Hag as well. Save the best for last. Uh, this is a great perk. I do like this perk. The issue is that you have to avoid the obsession, which isn't too hard because, you know, there's like a 75% chance that you will not be chasing the obsession. And you can also just choose not to chase them. And you can also use a special attack instead of a basic attack to hit the obsession, and you will not lose your, your tokens that way. Wraith loves this perk. Hag loves this perk. I mean, Clown could like this perk. 
Deathslinger loves this perk. This is like his, his main perk. Demogorgon, Executioner maybe, Nemesis. You know, lots of killers. And basically any killer who has a special attack would probably enjoy Save the Best for Last. Uh, Floods of Rage. Uh, it does rely on the Scourge Hooks, which are sort of luck-based. I don't really like, like the Scourge Hook perks because it is sort of luck-based, but it is kind of strong. It lets you see all Survivor Auras, um, except the one that was unhooked. It's like a... I know a lot of people say this, but it's, it's like a reverse barbecue and chili. It can lead to some survivors thinking that you're hacking, <laughs> because like they're going to be wondering, you know, how did he know I was there? You know, how did he, how did he know? Because what can happen is that somebody will unhook the survivor from the scourge hook. You'll probably be patrolling a gen or something, and you know the survivor will be in a in a nice spot. They'll be like behind a rock or something. They'll have no reason to think that you can see their aura, but because somebody got unhooked, you can see their aura. Uh, what we run this with make your choice yeah yeah make your choice perfect synergy right there make your choice absolutely beautiful synergy because the person who unhooks the survivor from scourge hook they will have their aura revealed for you and then you just chase them to get your insta down scourge hook gift of pain yeah this one's pretty annoying pretty annoying to deal with as a survivor because if you heal you will get a nasty 16% speed penalty to healing and repair actions. Now, of course, some people could say, oh, you know, just don't heal, bro. Well, I mean, you know, you could just not heal, but then you can be downed in one hit. It's sort of a, like a, a trade-off. It's like, do you want a faster repair speed or do you want to be at risk of being insta-downed, you know? So I think it's a pretty good perk. Um, even with it being a Scourge Hook perk and being kind of luck-based, but yeah, I, I would recommend it. Uh, Scourge Hook, Monster Shrine, not really worth it in my opinion. 20% faster progression when you're not within 24 meters. Uh, people will always unhook the survivor before they reach second state, okay? If they really want to, they will unhook them. And some survivors, they will they'll just run around following you. Some survivors bring flashlights, you know, they, they play like the, the scumbag uh, Neo players, uh, toxic players. They'll just follow you and unhook right after you, you hook somebody. I, I don't really see that much appeal in this perk, okay? It's not fast enough to warrant, the progression isn't fast enough to warrant bringing it. Pain Resonance, this is a great perk. You can combo this with Dead Man Switch and get some nice gen regression and stall time. So, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend this. Even by itself, it's pretty good. Septic Touch. There are some killers who are stealth-based, and they don't really see much value from this. But killers with a large or just a normal terror radius, they could see some value from this. If you have the proper killer, that would be like... Uh, Blight would be a great pick for Septic Touch, because he has a large terror radius, and he can traverse the map very quickly. So that would mean bringing other survivors into his terror radius relatively fast and they would likely be healing when he got there and they would become exhausted and blind so yeah i, I could see some use with uh, a blight or a hillbilly or something shadowborn i don't think it really does enough to to warrant bringing it in it increases your field of view a little bit but i feel like this would be baseline honestly too many important perks to, to bring this it is a nice benefit but there's too many good perks uh, shattered hope Probably not worth bringing because boon perks, they're not as popular as they used to be because they got nerfed, or Circle of Healing got nerfed anyways. If nobody brings a boon perk, then this does nothing for you, okay? Sloppy Butcher is a nice one. It gives you extra time just for hitting survivors, okay? Survivors have to heal for an extra four, about four to six seconds, depending on if they're healing themselves or if somebody else is healing them. But either way, it gives you a nice amount of stall time. And it also makes them a bit easier to track because they're bleeding more. If you pressure a player who's already healing, you can regress their healing progress. It's quite nice for many killers. Spies from the Shadows, I probably would not recommend this just because even if it goes off, it's 
pretty likely you'll know where somebody is already and you'll be chasing them. It could help you. Like if you're looking for somebody, it could go off and you could find somebody. But a lot of the time you already have an idea of where the survivors are. So it's not really that good. Spirit Fury, this is nice, but by itself, it's kind of lackluster. You would want to pair this with Enduring for the maximum effect. Starstruck, very nice perk here for getting fast downs after hooking somebody. If you want to use Starstruck, I would suggest bringing Agitation to make sure more survivors get exposed when you pick them up. Also, you want to pair that with a killer like Wraith or Nurse who can close the gap before the exposed status wears off. Okay, Strider. I think survivors are already loud enough as it is. You don't really need Strider. I think the main killer you'd want this for is of course Spirit. Spirit loves Strider, makes survivors very easy to find. Anyone else that likes Strider here? I don't know, not really. It's mostly a nurse and a, a nurse and a spirit thing. Your anatomy, I think this is a decent perk for chases. If you combine it with the uh, bamboozle, you can get some very fast uh, vaulting speed. Certain killers will make better use out of this than others, such as killers whose power does not really help them, uh, such as Trapper, his power doesn't really help in a chase unless he's already set up. Race, Myers, um, Hannibal, killers like that. Surveillance. Now, I think it's best suited for killers who are stealthy. The reason for this, for stealthy killers, if you know where somebody is, that is a huge advantage for you because you can close the gap without them knowing that you're coming for them. Uh, surveillance bypasses or blocking perks like distortion. Is it good? Okay, let's just let's get down to it. Is surveillance good? I think if you combine surveillance with the proper perks, such as jolt, or oppression, and you can get some decent information from this perk. Terminus. So they can't heal at the end of the game, which kind of ruins uh, Adrenaline, which is a, a very common survivor perk. If you don't like uh, survivors with Adrenaline, you can bring this. But, uh, I mean, even if other survivors are injured, you can only chase one, and the others are probably going to be opening the gates while you're chasing, you know, whatever survivor is. It doesn't seem that useful to me, but if you don't like Adrenaline, Terminus could be a nice pick for you, but... Territorial Imperative? Do I like this perk? Not really, because it's just, it's like a single use case, and it's sort of rare. Like, even if you see somebody going in the basement, like, the only reason somebody's gonna go in the basement is to save somebody else. That is the case 90% of the time. Or to, to loot the chest in the basement, which is like a one-time deal. Thanatophobia. The only reason to really pick this is if you are playing Legion or Plague. There's no other killer who can who can keep everybody injured consistently enough to to warrant bringing Thanatophobia. Maybe Wraith, maybe. Maybe Hag, but it's really just these two. Thrilling Tremors. I mean, it's a decent detection tool. That's how you should treat it. You know, for, for killers like... Um, you know, for, for Myers and for for Ghostface, who this, this perk comes from, it is actually pretty good for them because it tells you which gen to go to to start stalking people again. Thwack. After you break a pallet, you'll see everybody's auras within 32 meters. You'll probably already know where the survivor is that you're chasing, so I don't think it's that useful. Tinkerer. This is a pretty powerful perk. I do like this on certain killers such as uh, like a tier 3 Myers or a hillbilly or a Leatherface because all of those killers are very dangerous without their terror radius because they have one shots you know. Trail of Torment this is a pretty powerful perk except you do have to make sure that you, you use it like immediately because survivors can see the gen that you kicked it's highlighted in yellow they can just touch it and your benefit goes away. I mean, oftentimes you can get use out of it before somebody touches it. You can get your hit. It's basically like a free hit, okay? You get a free hit if you kick a gen. That's usually how it goes. Unnerving Presence. I would not recommend it because I share like, personal experience with you. Whenever somebody brings this perk, I hit great skill checks like 
70 percent of the time <laughs> it's like it's so much easier to hit great skill checks for some reason i don't know why it's like the great skill check portion is like half of the normal skill check bar which makes them easier to hit somehow i don't know maybe it's the increased pressure or something i don't know honestly it just seems like it works in the survivor's favor okay it doesn't seem like it does what it's supposed to really do it's also based on the tier radius so if you're a stealth killer it doesn't do anything for you it just it's it's not it's not worth it okay just don't bring it don't bring it unrelenting i don't think most killers miss their swings often enough to to warrant bringing this just don't miss your swings okay it's not hard the, the survivors are right in front of you just hit them okay it's not hard whispers i think nowadays there are better detection perks than whispers it's mostly effective at the end of the game when there's only one person left but otherwise during the entirety of the match this is probably going to be lit up for you is not going to give you any useful information. And finally, Zanshin Tactics. I think once you are an experienced DVD player, this perk is really not very good for you because you already know where everything is. You know, you know all the tiles. You know where the windows are, the pallets are. There are some some map variations that can make it a bit challenging to memorize where all the pallets are, right? And Zanshin Tactics can help you in those situations, but on most maps, you can remember where all that stuff is. That's just how it is. Uh, so yeah, I will see you all next time, okay?